Hello loreheads, and welcome to The League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. And today we're talking about the cantankerous Cavalier Kled, and we have a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, hello. My name is Sean, Shawnee Boy, Golly. <laughs> That's like three different nicknames I go by right now. I haven't really picked one. I'm from the... Uh, Trinity Force podcast that we've been doing a couple collabs here. I know you guys had Eric on for the the Kane episode, and you guys came onto our podcast. So I'm here to do Clud, which is one of my favorite champions in league. Nice, that's exciting. And you actually have played Clud, which is more than you could say for most of us. <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> I've play, I've he's definitely kind of a niche pick. He is. Actually, I was going to ask like. Before we get into his lore, there's not much there. Um, <laughs> why do you think Clud doesn't get played, really? And it's not even just, like, in regular games. He doesn't really get picked in pro games, either. Does Riot just not figure him out? <laughs> um, he, I mean, he's kind of weird. He's got, like, the weird Scarl mechanic, right? Which, like, doesn't translate to any other champion. And he's kind of notorious for falling off super hard. So if you don't get a good oh. lead early game, you are kind of screwed on Clud. So, okay. like, it's it seems definitely not his... great for competitive play. Where it... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and he, he has a bunch ult. of really hard counters, too. So, like, any champion that, like, can mess with, like, auto attacks, like, empowered auto attacks, like, Jax is the first one that comes to mind, like, just completely screw Cloud over. Oh, no. Because, like, most of his damage comes from his uh, W, so, like, if you can if you can block the W, Cloud is just kind of screwed, but... Oh. Okay. I, I, I feel like I saw him get some pro play at one point, and it seemed like a lot of that play was around the fact that he goes into that invulner- invulnerable state, like on the dismount. Is that, like, does that seem like, am I right? Am I just misremembering something? <laughs> so, yeah, so that that makes him really good at turret diving, which is, like, a staple in pro play, but, like, mm. there are just other champions that do it better and aren't, like, as risky of a pick. Sure. I think, yeah. I remember I saw Niles play it. At the end of last year, when it was kind of just, like, a for-fun game, I think, like, the season was pretty much over, and it must have been, like, a pick he just wanted to play, but, like, it's good for solo queue, that's for sure, but pro play, it's pretty okay. trash for. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the only people I've seen play it are, like, the EU top laners that were already kind of known for picking off-the-wall <laughs> picks anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I played him a little bit when he first came out. Just because, and this was another one where just like I liked his character design and his quote so much that I was like, I guess I'm picking up this character now. He's so <laughs> fucking delightful. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm bad. So, <laughs> well, you're not bad. You, you've played Clud like four times, maybe. <laughs> and you're like, ought to be I'm enough done. for anyone to go pro. <laughs> I didn't get a penta kill, and I'm never trying him again. <laughs> <laughs> so Clud was released August 10th, 2016. I guess that feels right. Last year. Right? Sometimes I yeah. forget he exists. Does anybody else just forget Cled's a champion? Not me, because no. he's my ringtone. And we did name our really? cat after Scarl, but still. He yeah. was your ringtone. Does he He's st- still that- my ringtone. Oh. It's just that I always usually have my phone on silence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like, right. I think it's because... Uh, maybe it's partially just because he probably doesn't see a ton of play, because he's kind of got a... Like we were kind of talking about, he's got like a weird play pattern, it kind of sounds like. Or it kind of feels like, from what I remember playing him a few times... Yeah, yeah, I get like genuinely excited when I see Kled in a game, even if it's not on our team. I'm like, oh, Kled, uh, someone's doing it. <laughs> Yay. You God do you, him. little Yordle boy. <laughs> so the the other thing I forgot to mention about Kled is his W. So like that's like his like main do- uh, source of damage, right? But it's also weird to play around because you don't use it. It's a passive skill. So you have to like time your all-ins on Clit around, like, when it's up, and, like, if you try to, like, go to farm a minion, you can just pop your W, and then you have to wait, like, another 20 seconds for it to come <laughs> up. So that's, like, another really weird part about his kit that I'm sure a lot of people find annoying. Is that kind of like a kin- like the Kinnon, uh, like, auto-passive thing, where you can accidentally, you can you'll accidentally proc it, like, or you have to proc it through, like, CS and stuff like that? Yeah, and sometimes, okay. sometimes you can, like, farm like a couple minions with like your Q and try to like keep it up because you want to all in soon but it's like it's weird it's like the only ability that like you you like hold off on putting a point into it so like Clud, like you want to all in some point early in the game like probably around level three when you have all your basic abilities so like you'll you'll put a point in your Q and your E and then like you'll wait until you actually like use your E to go in 
and then you'll put a point in your W so you get the auto attacks and make sure you don't like waste them oh. on minions. It's like the only champion I can think of that does that. <laughs> Interesting. See, I, I I never would have thought to do that. I would just be like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll get my third ability now or second. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it took me so long to even just learn to not take an ability until you're like in lane and the game has started. Like, don't take an ability until the you laning phase need. starts. Yeah. <laughs> We play so many Arams. You know if you'll need your root to get away from an exactly. innovator or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I will accidentally but, start like, I was like, oh, I have three points to put in each ability. Oh, you know, we yeah. Play so many, we play. I play mostly Arams. I was like, yeah. shit. Great. I've got my Annie's shield at level one. Cool. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> we do that way too much. <laughs> All right. So who wants to do the Kled impressions? All right. I think. I'll kick it off if we want. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Holy shit, where are we? <laughs> Pretty good. I like that one. I definitely blew out the audio real hard there. I think it sounded fine. We'll I see. tried to lean back. Um I, okay, so I can't do his where he gets real high. I just can't do it. Um <laughs> it's like, Yeah, I like it out here. Freedom, communion with nature, killing hikers. <laughs> All right, Sean boy. I <laughs> I trust. Where do you like find the list of them? Because the only okay, I'll just do the one I can think of where he goes squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you it was gonna be cringe. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, all right. Here, I'm John had two here. Away Here's, from the, yeah, yeah, the mic for, for the latter half of this one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> back up fifteen it, feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's fixing to be two sounds: me hitting you and. <laughs> It didn't that was ear poison, John. Was the audience is now deaf. It's just a big blue bar on yeah, audacity. It's a big blue bar. It's it's nice. <laughs> Great. Well, in case we have to cut that for audio reasons, <laughs> really easy to spot. I here. am Clint, High Major Commodore of the First Legion, Third Multiplication, Double Admiral Artillery Vanguard Company. You will respect my authority. That was his ringtone, or is his ringtone? Oh, really? <laughs> Which is a very. He gets a lot of stares when the phone goes off in front of literally any normal human being who doesn't play League of Legends. Yeah, because that's my ringtone, and my my text message sound is a silent death. <laughs> Man, your phone's loaded with yordles. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember? Okay, so for the longest time, my ringtone was Oriana when she says "ravage." You know, that was my text message, rather. And one time we were in game with Sarah, we were playing an ARAM and there was an Oriana and Sarah was like, you're getting a lot of texts over there, Rebecca. So fucking popular. It was this so game. cute. <laughs> That's true. She's not oh, a champion no. she'd seen much. Oh. All right. So Clyde doesn't have a lot of lore uh, on the universe page. He has a bio, his release video, which is really bad. I think I forgot. It was so oh, boring. I mean, it's I fine. It. It's fine. But I wish there was a little bit more I think movement it's good in of Kled. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and he has one short story, which is fun because it is from his point of view. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Now, both the short story and the bio were Odin Austin Schaefer. Okay. Nice. Cool. So, yeah, uh, not credited hmm. on the Universe, I don't think, in either squad. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Fun. Uh, who wants to take us through the bio? I think I think Mark and I came to an agreement that we have no notes this week. Why does I, it always happen the same week? You know, I think there's we there's this like a filter in our brain when it comes to champions like this, where it's like I know it's not even bad. I, I think um, I really was satisfied with Clud's lore because uh, it's just it's all we wanted. It's just like hey, you've got a really wild, crazy character uh, writing story <laughs> from, from their perspective, and they did. They listen to us. Yeah, I can do it. So I can do I, the bio. I'll be honest. I, with you. I think we can piece it together. Yeah, sure. sure. I wrote um, down one important name, and that's. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, essentially, Cled, Cled was just a normal yordle in Noxus, <laughs> right? Thank you. Cled <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a lot like a lot of other yordle and just other champions in general, in that he's very old and he is a legend across Noxus and he is renowned for participating in various battles across history, like centuries, you know, spanning. Um, and he's kind of a folk hero and kind of a legend. Um, the, the bio goes into a bit of detail around like the first engagement that he showed up in, which was at this, uh, the Battle of Drugna. I don't know how you pronounce it. 
Um, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And there was a specific general whose name I didn't write down, but John, I think this is the one you got. Zavin. Right. Which I, I Googled Zavin. it and I think that's Elise. Was it Elise eventually took yes. over that house? Yeah. Oh. Elise is the patriarch, the matriarch of uh, House Zavin. Oh, yeah. neat. Yeah. Um, but this this must be some old general from long ago, uh, but was leading some campaign in the north against barbarians. Uh, the general just kept fucking up and kind of stuck and not sure what to do, just had his beleaguered men form a defensive circle while he's in this pristine golden armor that's like untouched. He doesn't leave from the front, right? Uh, and then Kled shows up. I guess it's important to kind of highlight is that Kled still uses the glamour idea. So nobody knows that Kled's a Yordle. They all just seem as some old guy who rides around oh, on Scarl, I think. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And and Kled sort of rallies the attack. Now, whether he was doing that for, from like, it didn't seem like he was genuinely actually trying to lead Noxus. He was just really mad that they were on his land, these barbarians. So he kind of leads the charge and the Noxian soldiers just end up sort of following him. And the day is one, kind of. Um, at the very least, <laughs> it holds the barbarians off long enough that they can get reinforcements, et cetera. Um, and that starts the legend of Kled. And then the general is like never heard of or seen again. So he assumedly just died and everyone forgot about him. And Although he still has a noble house, apparently. In yeah, <laughs> you know, who knows, right? It's it, it, it's whatever. And then, and then that's essentially it, is that Kled, like I said, still a legend. People you know, don't really think he's real. But you know, whenever Noxus takes new territory, there's always uh, you know, Kled's land or property of Kled, I think is the actual thing. Oh, Science is yeah, showing up, that- which made me... Made me think of like Kilroy is, was here. If you like that thing from World War Two, the American soldiers would like write on places. Oh, that they, they, okay. It, Damn, it old history. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense that they might have taken that idea. Yeah, yeah Clet's kind of funny. He was just he was in Bandle City like every other Yordle, and he's like, I want to fight in wars. Who's doing that the most? Oh, Noxus. <laughs> <laughs> Before Noxus was even Noxus. Yeah, that's yes. true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what do we think of the bio? I thought. You know what I thought was interesting? There's a couple of things is that this one, more than a lot of other bios, is almost like a little short story in and of itself. It's like the little yeah. short story of this battle, um, which is just kind of, I don't know, interesting. I don't know if it worked necessarily. <laughs> it's, it's something. Um, and then I thought this one, like unlike a lot of other bios, like this to me really communicated a lot of what it would probably, like what it feels like to play Kled, like specifically about like his in-game abilities. Like they go into a lot of detail about how he's like, he's dismounting and he's like remounting and things that you wouldn't expect. There's like a lot of granular detail for a bio, I felt like. Um, for me, I don't, kind of, I guess like the remounting thing was like obviously, like they really tried to incorporate that into the story. <laughs> the part that they missed in this in the bio and like the story is they never talk about like the bear trap on a rope which always seemed really weird to me right. it's like it's oh, cute yeah. it's like never it's mentioned really... that's such a weird thing you'd think they'd talk about it a little bit but... that's true that yeah, would have been fun weapon. i was gonna yes. say that would have been really fun to incorporate into the short story especially mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, it's a weird omission it did not occur to me it probably wouldn't have occurred to me unless you had like you were literally watching this movie last week when Sarah visited how much Kled is just a dirty mouth Sir Didymus from Labyrinth and Scarl oh. is just Ambrosius. I didn't think of that. Okay. Yeah, it we really took me a, a moment there. I was wondering what the hell you were going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> they're like, they're the same character. <laughs> mm. Yeah, when your wife was here, we watched Labyrinth and the Scooby-Doo movie. It was a time. <laughs> it was a Which wild was time better? together. <laughs> <laughs> Let me Labyrinth. <laughs> I huh. thought, uh, right. so one of the things that stuck out to me was that the general in this story, uh, Zavon, like, I was very curious, like, man, how the hell did someone like him even get promoted to a general in Noxus? Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess it kind of makes sense that, I guess before Swain took over, I mean, there was a lot more of that type of royal, I the, guess, nepotism type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why uh, I liked that in the short story that there was that kind of that same, like, oh, a, a lord of Noxus. And he's like, that's not a true Noxian. And Kled, like, hates the idea that there's any kind of royalty in Noxus. He right. had the, he had the idea. <laughs> he had the idea long before Noxus did. That's true. He just he's, keeps to himself. I, I feel like, 
<laughs> That's the thing. I wonder if like Swain had a run in with Clit at some point, and then he was like, "I like I like the cut of his jib." <laughs> right? He got moxie, kid. <laughs> He's got wild ideas. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and I'm writing them all down. <laughs> He's like so like much like Heimer is the father of Piltover. Clit is the unofficial father of Noxus as we oh, know for it sure. now. Yeah. What if a Yordle founded every region? Like Poppy started <gasps> oh, Demacia. Stop it. Kenan um, found Ionia? Sure, yeah. Why, why yeah, not? I mean, yeah. <laughs> God okay. damn it, you're right. There's a Yordle at the heart of every region. <laughs> Except, well, well, who's in uh, Bilgewater? I almost said Bandle City. Uh, Bilgewater. Oh, uh, that's true. But they hate Yordles there. So they're like the exception I mean, that proves fizz. the rule. Fizz. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we can get <laughs> off it. Fizz. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... So something of note here, uh, Scarl is a desert Dracolops, or Dracolops, I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, I said Dracolops, but Drake... I think they, Drac. Hmm. They, they both have, work, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a fake creature, you can say it however the hell you want. Don't let people <laughs> tell you you're saying it wrong. <laughs> His name's Frudo, not Frodo. <laughs> it's a fake ass name, who cares? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, also, it is mentioned here that he has been given every title, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, it's kind of important to note here that his quotes imply that he has not been promoted to every rank. He has assumed every rank after killing enemies that have that rank. <laughs> and yeah. you know what? That's fair, Cled. That's, it's, that's fair. That's, that's how ranks work. That's fair, right? I mean, it's pretty Noxian if you think about it, right? He's he's got the That's true. He's got like the the right ideas, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hi. I don't know. I mean, the bio's fine. I think, like I said, the thing that stuck out to me was that it did seem like if you were going to take someone who had, didn't know much about Cled and try and pitch them like this is what playing Cled is kind of all about, it's like this is maybe a better like way of doing that. I don't know. Cause it's like. I guess it just felt like it was showing, like, hey, here's the main interaction with Scarl, and here's the idea of, you know, getting dismounted and having to rebuild your meter, your Scarl meter. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> Scarl meter. Is, is there, do you know what the actual name of that resource is, Sean? No, I have no idea. Okay. Do you have a name for it? I like Scarl it? meter. We're going to call it the Scarabar. <laughs> yeah, the Scarabar. Scar that's pretty cool. That's pretty I good. Like that. <laughs> I love Scarl. I mean, I might be a little biased because, again, our cat's name is Scarl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just as cowardly as no, his name. No, it really was the perfect name for him. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think Clay's just a really fun personality. And I thought they, they had, like, a unique idea with him. They're like, he takes over a piece of land and he decides that it's his. And he just wants to be in wars. Right. <laughs> and, know. like, he owns every piece of land. <laughs> Except Ever. some of them he hasn't gotten to yet yeah. <laughs> to yeah. but, officially claim. But everything's his. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing why he doesn't... I guess he wouldn't want to move into Noxus officially and try to work with them. I feel like he's a he's a lone wolf with Scarl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. That's more fun Especially anyway. Especially because, like, I mean, he has a lot of quotes about even killing his own teammates in game. Uh, he does not want to work with anyone. That's <laughs> true, he did. Does, oh, what? Doesn't he have a line about getting a... Deca kill. He does. We <laughs> talked about it last episode oh, about, did we? <laughs> about Deca kills, and we finally have a champion who immediately has a quote about oh. getting a Deca kill. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's just sympathetic to the solo queue experience. He 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 understands. You know, <laughs> wanting to kill your team. I agree. <laughs> and All right. for timeline reasons, uh -huh. in case any of you are curious. Mm. Uh, this battle happened somewhere between the years zero and 400. <laughs> Why is this helpful? Cool. Why is any of what we do helpful? That's true. Nothing we do is helpful. <laughs> it's actually detrimental in a sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess, Cled, I mean, that's that's one thing that gets to call out with the bio is it falls into a lot of the, sim the same tropes of, hey, here's a character who's ali alive for forever and here's their legend, you know? Yeah. Um, at least with this one, we kind of get, like, here's the, the skinny. Here's the actual factual about Cled. That's true. Yeah. We actually see Cled and what he's really doing. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the legends are probably really true with Cled. Right. It felt like... It didn't sound like exaggeration. No. It all seemed like Cled. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the short story, uh, it's called Where the Dracolops Roam, or the Dracolops, if you're John. Or the Dracolopes. Oh. Dracolopes. 
Oops. pissed. No, oops, Shit, no. You're just adding E's everywhere. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> this is Massachusetts, baby. That's true. We <laughs> just add a bunch of letters and pronounce four of them. <laughs> Whilst. <sighs> All, All right. right. Uh, I can do this one, too. It, it's it's The actual is pretty straightforward. It's what you would expect. Yeah. Cled is, is patrolling his land. He he gets into a fight with Scarl at the start and you know swears <laughs> so off cute. the lizard uh, and decides to go kill off the... Uh, the people who are trespassing on his land um, runs into a small, like, half a battalion? I don't remember. A lot. They shoot him with a ballista. <laughs> um, and Scarl, you know, comes, you know, kind of comes back. I think they, they he goes with Scarl to go fight them. During the fight, Scarl yeah. runs off, and then eventually Scarl comes back. And it kind of ends with him talking about how much he loves Scarl, uh, which is a fun little way for the story to kind of end, you know. Scarl's so funny, because they really make a, a point to... to tell you how indestructible Scarl is. <laughs> Quite yeah. literally bullets, arrows, swords, nothing hurts Scarl. Which, are there more of these in the world? Because how horrifying. I hope they're all really terrified all the time because they could easily take over Runeterra. That would be the next doomsday. They seem pretty <laughs> lazy, though. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Nice. true. Yeah. It's like a cat, it. truly. It's like doing their own things. I was curious if the these because i don't think it ever specifies like it says where they're from roughly but Mm -hmm. we don't have any reference of where that location is i'm curious if they're from bandle city like if Mm. if, if Mm. they call them a desert desert where they're from is from. oh yeah desert huh it's hard to say because bandle city always kind of comes off as very you know woodsy right (laughs) it's not it's not like (laughs) who knows desert all the yordles fucking leave it maybe battle city sucks ass (laughs) (laughs) i mean we saw pentakill fucking wreck it so oh maybe that's (laughs) why they left that's why everyone left this place ward came over with his dump truck and ruined everything (laughs) (laughs) twerked all over that motherfucker (laughs) (laughs) oh no yeah this short story was pretty cute i liked that we had something from Clyde's point of view there were some fart jokes in the beginning which I mean, they kind of fit. John, I'm sure, loved them. There's a twinkle in his eye right now. They were so good. <laughs> you know, look, I'm a I'm a sophomoric individual, I, I think. Um, <laughs> but they, they, they didn't really land for me. I think it's because it's already kind of just funny because Cled's it's Cled's voice like talking, right? And and the writing's already kind of like got a nice little level of humor to it. So like a fart joke feels like a I don't know. It's like a whisper in a in a a monsoon. I don't <laughs> know. It's like whatever, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, I think what it is, Clyde was mad at Scarl, and then the the straw that broke the camel's back was that Scarl had a nasty fart. I guess it was better than Olaf farting in the ruination of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's more on brand. <laughs> yeah. Just, is that something that happens, like, in-game? Like... <laughs> Does Scarl fart in-game, Sean? No, Can you tell I don't think so. <laughs> Can I just read the line, though? They wrote a... Her sphincter splutters ryth- rhythmically <laughs> as she breaks wind. Yeah, I That's know. It's quite it the description. It was so poetic. That's, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's why I liked okay. it so much. <laughs> that's true. That was very your kind of humor, like a hitchhiker's guide kind of humor. And, like I loved like... his, I loved his description of every, like I like the fact that not only was this a story in Cled's voice, but like the environmental descriptions, as opposed to being, you know, being told by a third party. They're also like in Cled's voice, yeah. which I liked a ton. Um, and <laughs> I wrote oh, down one I quote see, that Cled wrote yeah. here that Cled said to, when that guy was like, "Oh, our lordship owns this area." He was like, "Your lordship can kiss my lizard's puckered mud flap." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, a little different. I feel like it's a term that I'm going to start using now, no, and I'm apologize I, to no. everyone. But in every episode from now, we can add it to the bingo board. <laughs> Puckered mud flap is going to be no. I think even like IRL, you're just going to start dropping. Yeah, that. me too. Like, this is less bad than it's, it's the... <laughs> <laughs> We can't even say shit in front of his folks. They're too Catholic. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's somehow both poetic and intensely graphic. Mm. <laughs> this is an unusual combination. You don't get very much. You think oh. it's well? I, I don't want to get into it, but yeah, it's. I don't know for some reason that that we kind of really, uh, <laughs> really got me. I don't know, but not in like a laugh way. I get you. Yeah, yeah. But I, no. uh, I thought it was. Fu- I feel like Cled in this story came off to me very much like a violent, murdery parallel to Lulu. 
Like mm. they both like hear the voices in their head and they both like <laughs> see things, but like Lulu just wants to play with all of them and Cled just wants to murder all of them. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's actually a really good uh that's a good, compar- a good comparison, right? Um he's very whimsical uh murderer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, I like Clyde. I like what we have here. But with all of that, I'd love to see Clyde interact with other Yordles because he is so very different from them. Not that they don't kill people, Yordles, but they're usually not this bloodthirsty. Hmm. Although, I mean, old Teemo lore, I, don't, I haven't read new Teemo what? lore to see if they retconned this, but I know that old Teemo lore legit had him pretty fucking dark even really? before his commando <gasps> skin came out oh, yeah i, I need a murdering chemo it, the thing is that it mixes up with the commando skin in my brain mm. right um mm-hmm. yeah it, i i'm pretty satisfied with it like it's a fun little story i did like that they really highlighted like you're saying how indestructible uh scarl is as if to yeah. almost like reassure the reader like don't worry it, it'll be <laughs> fine scarl will be fine don't worry you know we and it makes it funnier. Scar- we don't know about Cled, but Scar will be fine. <laughs> it's just all that better that she like dips anytime it's remotely terrifying. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I did put a note here too. So to your glimmer comment, Mark, um, someone had asked the developers about this when the short story came out, um, and their response was, and I don't know if this ever happened, but. Uh, they were basically like, well observed, Yordle lore coming soonish. Uh, <laughs> and what year was this? <laughs> this was when it was when Cled first came out. Oh, so this was six years ago. Uh, Yordles are magical creatures, <laughs> like fairies. They interact with the physical world and manifest in peculiar ways. So how you would see them is quite different compared to how a child or Garen might. Even Lux might see Cled slightly differently than her brother does because her relationship with magic and that heroic ideal is different than Garen's. So it seemed to move away a bit from the idea of glimmer as mm. as like a manufactured type thing that can go on and on and more just like people see him different. <laughs> like it's like huh. you see yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> Face you look deep in the Kled's <laughs> eyes and you see you know. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. It's interesting. I guess like it's yeah, maybe that's what's just what's going on in that Noxium for some reason sees him as an old man. I don't know. Hmm. Mm. Riding a pony. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like that doesn't add much though. Like it's it's hard to like contextualize any of that story with the idea that they don't see Cled as we know him. They see him as like an some old guy or what have you, you know? Cuz I can only just picture him as the Yordle, right? Or is that just me? Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I picture him as his night skin because that skin was always off-putting for me because it was like his release skin and it was he was like one of the first champions i was like "Ooh, i'm not interested at all in that release skin because his main skin was so cool and that one was like oh it's he's like a person i don't like that (laughs) i don't know if i remember this one you don't want to humanize that's who i imagine everyone sees okay interesting i kind of was looking over them i don't really remember what it looks like he doesn't have many skins i guess that's that's no interesting he doesn't get played oh god (laughs) yeah he's like a skinny gragas Ooh, that's a good comparison. With a chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like riding a chocobo. Oh, he is. It, yeah, he kind of is. He does have a Final Fantasy look to him almost. Or at least oh, the chocobo. Count Cledula is really good, though. I was mm-hmm. going to say he has no good skins, but that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That was the first one I was interested in, I think, of his. Oh, that's great. Uh, now, it's also worth mentioning that Cled, throughout the story, too, is pretty drunk or high. We don't really know the effect that this has on mushroom juice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's called it mush juice. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Good for him, you know? <laughs> He's living life. Yeah. I wrote down a quote of his from early on in the story, too. Like, this time of day, the light pra- plays tricks on you. I meet a snake who wants to discuss pie crusts, except it ain't a snake. It's the shadow of a rock. Damn shame. I have some darn specific notions about pie crusts. <laughs> At least when I remember what they are again. I ain't had a proper conversation about the subject in years. <laughs> yeah, I like the backwoods kind of kind of hillbilly thing going on with him, too. He's just got his moonshine, right? Yeah, he did, you're right. And he <laughs> just wants to talk about pie. Shooting at trespassers. <laughs> it's pretty fun, I like it. His mush shine. Mush, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Clint, Clint Eastwood over there. <laughs> All right. 
How are we all feeling? Any final thoughts about the short story? I mean, I really liked it. I like the short yeah. story a lot. I think you should read it. Yeah, I, I agree. The writing's <laughs> not, fun. Not you guys. You guys have read it. <laughs> the I did listener read it. Yeah. at home. You were looking right in my eyes. I was like, I read it. I promise. <laughs> Accusingly. Sometimes I skim, you but this time it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I should read the... Yeah, I liked right. it. I think um, I said before, but it's what we're always asking from Riot is like, hey, take a fun character and just write something with that fun character. And especially with Clive, who's so like purposefully isolated, um, like I don't really need much else. I always, I will always yeah. take more. You know, don't get me wrong. I was full on expecting a like point of view of like a soldier who saw Cled in battle instead, because that's what it seems like yeah. they always do with their fun characters. Yeah, he would just kind of show up in one little sequence or something like that, right. or they, they wouldn't yeah. even be sure. Which seems crazy because it's like if Cled's there, you're gonna <laughs> fucking know Cled was there, <laughs> right? It's like this this fifty page story where Cled shows up at the end. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. Moving on, we have one cinematic, which was kind of a cinematic it was mm. like his, his launch type cinematic oh, yeah. called the reunion which I, I don't think this is confirmed anywhere but this is likely during the events of where the drake elopes roam this could, could very be. well have just been like the cinematic of that fight um and this is basically just like a series of 3d still frames with the camera panning around it to create motion um, it's like a hectic battlefield with warriors being hit by something we can't really see until the very end, uh, where we get a close up of Kled causing all this mayhem, jumping in slow motion towards Skarl, who's jumping to meet him. And the the whole cinematic is like uh, along to uh, Edward Grieg's morning moods. It's, it's very uh, classical music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've cinematic. heard it a million times. No one's going to know yeah. it from the title, but when you go and look that up, you're going to be like, oh, this one. I know this one. Yeah, well, it sounded like y'all or, or Rebecca sounded like you weren't a huge fan of it, and I, I, I can, I can sympathize. I think in rewatching it, especially, it's like there's like a whole b- helmet brutalian, right? But they all look the same <laughs> and kind of like yeah. a cheap, like, like this is to me is like if you said this was like some mobile game ad or something, I would completely believe you. You know what I mean? <laughs> it does look like that. I, I liked it, but it 100 percent does look like a, a mobile game ad. Now that you mention it, <laughs> yeah. Well, think- Except there has to be like someone's weird grandma would come and like murder somebody and then bury him in the garden. It's a very specific mobile game. I was gonna say I, I feel like I feel like multiple mobile games do that. <laughs> but yeah, that is a specific. I, one. I'm I getting don't... like that ads on TikTok. They had Kathy Bates in their ads. Okay, this is not just me. I get them on TikTok now. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I'll be I honest. I don't know what the game is called. <laughs> it's fine. That sounds very anyway, specific. Something very... mansion, I think. Yes. Look up Kathy Bakes Bates mobile ad commercial. You'll find it. Why is she in these? <laughs> then I you'll love understand her. what we're talking yeah. about. Okay, sure. Sure, our episodes take a little homework to understand, but <laughs> <laughs> they're worth it in the end. John, were you playing at the time when this came out? Like, like were you around for Clud's release? Um, I honestly don't think so. So, twenty sixteen, yeah. I definitely I took like a two year break somewhere in mm. there. So, I think I actually wasn't. I, I think that. I remember I came back and played like a couple games and he must have been like really strong because i feel like the champion was like super bullshit when i played against (laughs) it (laughs) and then like i think i started playing regularly again like 2020 so Mm. by then he's not he's like barely like picked at all anymore like we said before so he had kind of found his place now but yeah so was that like a case of of like you played against him. It's like, oh, this is bullshit. I'm gonna start playing this, this oh, bullshit. Fuck this yeah, thing. it feels super bullshit when like when you play against a good Cled. Like the mechanic where uh, he loses tower aggro after like he dismounts, and then like he gets an extra ability too. He gets the shotgun off his Q. It just feels so mm. bullshit when you like you play against a good Cled and you just get tower dove, and like he just stops taking damage, and you just can't do anything about it. So it like, sounds bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it feels. I'd be tilted. Like he's like probably he, to me like he's like one of the worst champions to play against. Like a good one of them because it feels mm-hmm. so bad. And you just probably have like never seen a good Cled when you're getting played against a good. Like I've seen yeah. a good Aurelia. I still struggle against it, but I've I've seen it. <laughs> I know exactly when I'm gonna die. Yeah, because I've and I played. and I know how. Like I know what she's doing to me. But if Cled just like ripped my me. butt up, <laughs> I'd be like, I think you mean your. 
puckered mud flap. I'm sorry, you're right. If Cled came over and ripped up my puckered mud flap, <laughs> I wouldn't know what he just did. It's like Vlad. I played so much Vlad though, I still fucking can't figure Vlad out. I'm like, fuck you and your stupid bar. I don't know. Pool. <laughs> become puddle of blood. I don't know. It reminds me a little bit of like old my old favorite flash. band. <laughs> puddle of <laughs> Wow. You fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking 90s boy. Oh shit. Okay, Sick sorry. puddle of mud reference, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our whole audience of like 18 to 22 year olds is totally gonna <laughs> understand that. But, um, I don't know what the, whatever I was gonna say. Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, uh, no, John, sorry. It's not. <laughs> yeah, don't apologize <laughs> for I him. I have no, I have no shame. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The cinematic is fun. It's a fun idea, I would say. Like, the slow reveal yeah. to them, like, jumping and meeting is cute. It's just a lot of, like, the the in-betweens kind of feel a little... It's a, they, those All those guys look the exact same. I can't stress enough. <laughs> Maybe that's how they look to Kled, I guess. <laughs> that's true. Maybe it was symbolic. You just didn't understand how deep it was. You know what? I, I, am, I would buy that. If, I would, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to believe that that's Even women, happening. like, they all just look the same to him. <laughs> just some weird, generic, bald-headed guy. <laughs> that's how a lot of dudes look to me, too. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone's bald love, to Just, you. like, the loving look, though. The end of the video, just yeah. the, the, yeah, the look cute. between Scarl and Kled, mm-hmm. so pure. Yeah, that's Aww. really it's it, it. That part lands for sure. All yeah. right, how did Kled's lore feel to you, by the way, Sean? Did it feel? Did it feel what you were expecting? <laughs> um, for like how Riot treats Kled in general, kind of like they forgot he exists. <laughs> the lore kind of <laughs> pretty similar. Yeah, kind of rolled over the top of my head right away. Like I said, I I had read the. The two stories, like, two hours before this podcast, and I had already started forgetting about them now when we're recording, so, like... <laughs> yeah, they they did bleed together a little bit for me, mm-hmm. the bio and the short story, because they were very similar, and they kind of mentioned a very similar battle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could even... I don't. I didn't see how many words was in the bio, but it felt, it felt kind of long. It's like, you probably just trim out a lot of that stuff. We don't need these details, right? Because it's like, none of that's, yeah. none of that's ever going to matter. You know, like... <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't need that battle in there. You're right. Hmm. Well. Yeah. All right, John wrote uh, so many quotes down. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, Clyde obviously has a ton of quotes. I wrote down some quotes that I thought were particularly interesting, and I wrote down quotes that were references to other shit, which... For the record, Kled also has a much larger than normal number of external references in his quotes. Oh, yeah. he seems like a champion who we get a lot of pop culture references or something. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah, he's a good vehicle for, for things. I saw he had a Charles Manson quote. What? <laughs> Which is a hell of a stance. I, I like it. <laughs> what? Pl- did you write that one down, John? I did, yeah. Please. <laughs> you know, a long time ago, being crazy meant something. <laughs> Oh my god. I was like, huh, alright. <laughs> uh, so we've got the, uh, of course you realize this means war, classic Bugs Bunny quote. <laughs> well, isn't that Daffy Duck? Or, yeah, classic, well. A Bugs Bunny cartoon. Looney Tunes, at least. Looney Tunes, yes. <laughs> the umbrella. <laughs> I'm impressed that either of you remember that, because I would not have at all. His, his, his bill's all backwards, right? And he's like... Oh. This means war. <laughs> uh, we got I don't need nothing but this axe and this gun and this hat. I feel like it's probably a jerk reference. I've never seen the jerk. Oh, Again, really? another timely reference for our 18 to 22 year old audience. <laughs> hey, you know what? Clad is clad. Clad is a cantankerous old. Uh, That's true. Mm. I don't know. Boomer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Kled's a boomer. Kled, no, Kled loves his fucking Steve Martin. All right, right. Yeah, the jerks. That's how comedy. Yeah. You don't make comedies like that anymore. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm Kled, and this here Scarl, prepare to die. Okay, I know that one. Yeah, put some Princess Bride up in here. Uh, don't try and understand them. Just rope throw and brand them. Is a reference to the song Rawhide. I don't know that song. <laughs> Sing it for me. Uh, Rawhide. Rawhide. Yeehaw. <laughs> Get him up. <laughs> Never down. Vote it up. Vote Rawhide. Yeah, you know, that song. I thought you were trolling me when you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Is uh, it a song I probably heard and just didn't You may have. Oh, okay. yeah. 
I still didn't recognize it based on your impressions, but that's okay. It's like, and it's very stereotypical, like cowboy music. Okay. Yeah. You've probably heard if you've ever seen like a western. It's probably <laughs> makes me think of maybe not uh, that old a western. Oh. Five old goes west. <laughs> a little bit. I love Five old goes west. Then you'll love the song. <laughs> you love Five old, you'll love it. I don't think the reasons I love Five old goes west are gonna be <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, we got the 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 this is Noxus, obviously. Time okay. Word. From three hundred. Uh, too stupid to live, too dumb to die. Say, uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Noxus was created to train the faithful. The Dune reference. Mm, that I, and, that I don't uh, remember. Oh, my God. I'm just a yordle standing in front of you, asking you to shut the hell up. <laughs> the Notting Hill reference. <laughs> this was so clearly all written by older millennial nerds yes. right <laughs> like the dude you and, and i Princess actually bride spoiler john and i wrote all this shit <laughs> <laughs> well who decided on the charles manson quote because i have some questions for you it was a joint effort <laughs> uh you can't bushwhack a bushwhacker i mean i feel like the quote existed before this but the thing that I always associate with that quote is role models. I've seen role models a lot. I don't remember this. Jane Lynch. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, she's so funny in that movie. <laughs> and then the the last thing, which is a quote that I opened the episode with, uh, there's fixing to be two sounds, me hitting you and uh, blah, blah, blank blah, blah. is yeah. Breakfast Club reference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, is that where that yeah. originated and from? The end, it's the first place I could find it. Okay. And the end of that quote, for the record, in case you're unfamiliar, is me hitting you and you hitting the ground. <laughs> I mm. thought it was floor. One of, one, one of them. What if they're not in a place with a floor? You want the quote to be accessible <laughs> but, regardless oh, you're talking of the about original... there's a floor, it's not ground, right? <laughs> <laughs> I told you this when we were brainstorming these quotes. We need... <laughs> <laughs> I also wrote down just a handful of like quotes that I liked. Uh, we mentioned like what was that? Oh, I should go for the deca kill. Huh? If you say so. <laughs> uh, mushrooms are healthy once you get used to the madness and paranoia. <laughs> I don't have trouble communicating. Words is just treacherous bastards, <laughs> which I loved. I, I can, I can, I feel that. I can sympathize as somebody who mumbles a lot. <laughs> I can fucking feel that. <laughs> You? <laughs> uh, well, my foot wanted to meet your ass, and I'm about to give him a shotgun wedding. <laughs> Can't believe they let him swear. Riot. Yeah. Such a rebel. Uh, and he has two conflicting quotes here, which oh. uh, I take issue with. Mark, these were these must have been yours. <laughs> 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 At the gates of Qualthala, they tried using that boiling oil on us, but you can't deep fry courage. <laughs> Immediately followed by, I am deep fried courage <laughs> and an apple pie of angry. I mean, I think that's probably intentional. It sounds like it. Well, See. are these intentional? Oh my the God. fact that he continually refers to Scarl both as a girl and a boy. Really? Oh, really? He's got, <laughs> uh, of course I don't need Scarl, but he helps. Mm. And you should run. Scarl likes his food lively. <laughs> Mm. Now, yeah, in the short story, she's referred to as she and it, which was interesting. Yeah. Um, oh. Do you remember when they were teasing him? There were like the posters, wanted like posters. wanted, yeah, for cowardice. And, um, do you, I, I, I don't have an image up. I was wondering if you like pulled any image of those up when you're doing your research, because maybe maybe we can get a definitive definitive answer from those. I don't know, or maybe they're they're all messed I up too. I did, and they are all messed up. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. Well, at Although least it's the, consistent. I think that another thing that the uh, was kind of confirmed in that like AMA was that Cled knows that Scarl is a girl. Mm. That was the only thing that, but like, but then there are other references where uh, hmm. maybe it's the mush juice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I assume because he's like having conversation. I mean, he is ins insane to a degree. <laughs> you know. And high. Yeah, both, right? Fuck it. And there was one last quote that I wrote. Okay. When he kills LeBlanc. <laughs> she had one crazy getup. Them city folk clothes is getting ridiculous. <laughs> and then Scarl growls. And he'll, like, 
And then he says, yeah, I'll try it on later. <laughs> I almost did that one, but it's so long. <laughs> That's so great. I'd love to see Clyde in a LeBlanc outfit. Mm-hmm. Right? I think he'd pull it off. It'd be a little big on him, though. <laughs> Very audacious. <laughs> All right. Are we having any other uh, thoughts on canon? Canon Clyde? Um, only thing is that he does have old lore. Um, really? Oh, I didn't even check, actually. <gasps> John, I know. I, slacking. <laughs> he does, but the weird thing about it is that there's not really anything changed except they added in details like that general's name. Um, before, it was just kind of a nameless huh. collection of generals, and I think it was at a nameless place, and now they've kind of put names to places. Um, I don't know if that was like hmm. they thought something was going to be done. I guess it's better to be more specific, right? If you did want to do something later. Yeah. yeah, but they just wanted to like tie the random connection to Elise. Maybe they're doing both the things at the same time or some shit. I know they did that with uh, someone that we did recently too. I think it was Canon, where they had <laughs> like a reach. Oh, the to, the region they name added or something. Some specific region names that Master Yi is there originally. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 I thought that was funny. That it was it was all the same shit. They just put in some names and places. You know, someone went in and put a bunch of proper nouns everywhere. <laughs> all right au's we got two of them <laughs> three of them oh shit sorry oh, shit. yeah the side panel always cuts one of them off oh yeah oh i see it now so first we have medieval where each champion is a person from the medieval period <laughs> okay dope that's a hard word to say period. it wanted to come out of my mouth as pyramid i know but i, heard I knew it. that that wasn't the word <laughs> Uh, so this is Sir Cled, or more accurately, Sir Prince Chevalier Archduke Lord Double Earl Cled, Sir Cled for short, is a half-mad knight from the aptly named Kingdom of Cled, which contains exactly two subjects, Cled and his cowardly avian mount, Skarl. Together, the pair ravage the countryside to reclaim Cled's land, which is apparently uh, all land, everywhere. So he's clad, but he rides a chicken. Yeah, mm, and he's, he's a, knight. a knight. He's the proper uh, chevalier. <laughs> In this lore, Skarl is misspelled. I just wanted to point <gasps> oh, that out. You know what? It's an alternate universe. It? <laughs> That's what's different is Skarl is spelled slightly differently. I, with I, only I one honestly, a. I don't think they realized that Skarl was supposed to have two A's. Yeah. Now we've got Marauders vs. Wardens, set in an alternate rune terror where each champion is a warrior fighting on the Summoner's Rift. This one is Marauder Cled. Throughout history, the Marauders have balanced on the knife's edge between brutality and cunning. General Cled, one half of the pair that currently leads the regime, is truly the incarnation of their historic brutality. And little more. If it weren't for Sin Zhao, Cled would bet everything on a final bloody battle. Oh, oh. Nate. So what's going on with him and him and Xin Zhao? What, what's going on? Do we know anything about that? Uh, I feel like he's just you know also in this as the uh, the the non bloody leader oh, okay. of the warden or marauder <laughs> or whatever. He's this, yeah, he's the uh, he's the brains behind the operation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Galaxy and then we have harrowing. Zhao. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now this is kind of their Halloween skin separated into trick-or-treaters, witches, vampires, and monsters. And this one is Count Cledula. And this one is in Cled's voice. Oh. Yeah. This blood is my blood. This candy's my candy. Who sent you here? You're not real ghosts. I'm Count Baron Double Marquis Lord Duke Cledula, and I'll teach you not to trick-or-treat on my land. So <laughs> they really they really had a one-track mind for Cled. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> I guess he likes his land. Yeah, yeah, I, right. That's it's funny. I feel like that's something we we talk about sometimes with the skins, but like this one is the it really is just Cled, but in Halloween or just Cled, <laughs> but he's a knight. <laughs> I know. It's, it's even the Halloween one. I thought maybe he'd it'd be something to do with him being a monster. It's still land. No. <laughs> it's still just land. It's the but only thing that also, lasts. Also, he wants candy and blood. I guess, I guess that's, that's fair. fair. What skin? Totally uh, what skin do you use for him, Sean? Or do you like? Do you have them all? Do you just have like a fave? 
<laughs> no, I just use the base skin. I I have Marauder, and I honestly hate it. I, feel, I think it <laughs> I don't like feels it either. bad, and like the sound effects yeah. are not great. It doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize it had different sound effects. It's tough because, like, I feel like Cled's. I mean, Cled is just such a good visual design. It's very hard to come up with a skin for that that is better. I don't know. I think there's a lot of ways you could play with it, like Count Cledula. Yeah, that's fun. But I feel like going into those like generic metal looking with a glowing eye. That's never my favorite skin line anyway. I don't really like any of like the battle cast ones, the Marauder ones. I don't like those. Yeah, like battle cast, but I don't like the Marauders. No, it's just not for me. A lot of it's like it, you know, with battle cast as an example, it kind of depends on the champion too. Like if it was something that was really like a battle cast Lulu. I might be in, oh, interested in, right? I'd buy the shit out of that. You're right. But like Clev <laughs> being like, like you say, all decked out in armor and, and, and metal and stuff, it's like, eh, it doesn't really do. You're hiding well. the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, his base skin, like y'all were saying, is a lot of fun. The kind of almost um, yeah. like 18, I think like 1800s, like, uh, like military style outfit. Like I can imagine him in a big regiment, like walking in a, a rank or whatever I don't know <laughs> right. terms yeah, military terms the commando <laughs> skill skin line yeah yeah I, like I would I would buy a skin for any champion that just made them look like Kled's base skin <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want for everyone I feel like oh, Kled Kennen oh god that'd be great huh Kleden Clennon. oh god yeah fucking stop <laughs> oh that's their like couple name oh <laughs> All the shurikens are little bear traps. <laughs> <laughs> right. What about, uh, what about reverse clad where you got Scarl riding clad? Oh, <laughs> that is so perfect. That'd be great. They need to do more reverse skins. I feel like they... It's just Andy's reverse Andy is so good. Yeah. Right? Reverse like, Nunu where he's just the tiny kid holding up the giant. <laughs> I don't yeah, think he, they could do that. I think they have to dress him up. Like, that's what reverse Annie is. It's not like a big giant Annie comes out it. when you do Tibbers. <laughs> yeah, like it's that. just <laughs> Tibbers dressed as Annie. <laughs> oh. I said what I said, and I want that skin. <laughs> a monstrous Nunu all, like, deformed and dressed. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a fan. Oh, man. And then the snowball could just... It's, it's just Willump in a circle. And okay, anyway. It's just rolling Willump. <laughs> Let's get to those fun facts. All right, we got some fun facts. <laughs> uh, here are all of Kled's ranks. Oh, God. Uh, forward Admiral Major, Sergeant General Colonel, High Major Commodore of the First Legion, Third Multiplication, Double Admiral, Artillery Vanguard Company, Rear Forward Brigadier Admiral, Sir Admiral Major, Lieutenant Sergeant Commodore, Sergeant Double Admiral, and Lord Colonel Major Centurion. Huh. And these are a few titles that he actively refuses. Master Tactician and Mister. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Cled. <laughs> uh, Cled is voiced by Spike Spencer, who also voiced Wukong. Oh. And I just want to do a shout out here. Like, our man really left it all in the recording booth when Tell he you did what? Cled. God damn. <laughs> I, I I saw I, I saw that that he did Wukong. I was like I <laughs> could I would not believe Never you known. if I hadn't read it with my yeah. own eyes. Cled's great. I mean, we're all trying to do it right, and it's like it just doesn't nail when he hits those. When he gets into that really high, oh, like man, it's so good. You, yeah, it makes me. I would be curious to see. Maybe I should go look to see if because uh, the guy who did Fiddlesticks, he had done a little video of like here's how I do the Fiddlesticks voice. I would be interested to see if there's something similar with him and like here's me doing the Cled voice oh, and just see yeah. um, what that's like. That would be, That'd be awesome. Uh, we mentioned it before, but Scarl species, the Dracolops, are immortal and unkillable wind spirits that embody the isolation of the Noxian plains. Oh. oh. Hmm. So not... I guess that kind of answers my question. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you knew the answer the whole time. <laughs> it was You're inside of me us. the whole time. <laughs> I wanted the surprise reveal right now. Mm. Surprise to everyone, including me. <laughs> So wind spirits, are they related to Janna? <laughs> sure. Fuck it, right? Why not? That'd be great. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Janna, maybe. Except their power's not based on belief because people think they're ponies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cled, as we mentioned, is over a thousand years old. Older than Noxus itself, as he was present among the Noxi during the Rune Wars and potentially even before them. Mm. Yep. 
Uh, it is believed that Kled's mushroom juice may be derived from the mushrooms that Timo uses for his traps. Oh. And now, is that because they're both yordles? Or is it? <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a fine comparison, I mean, or, you know, connection to draw. I was curious. I like the idea that that's where he got. He took something of Vandal City with him, you know. He <laughs> Little piece likes, of Vandal City. He still likes oh, mushroom always. juice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kled is one of 22 champions without a single ability power ratio on any ability. Hmm. Uh, he was also, Kled and Skarl are the first champion with two separate health bars, which combine to form the highest in-game base health um, of any champion in the game. And Kled alone has the lowest interesting oh. <laughs> interesting Damn. so this was this More was something Sona, I, was, huh? I was curious about the gameplay wise is like does is like getting a bunch of stats from like scarl is it kind of like a nar situation where like when you're big nar you get a bunch of stats that help you kind of be a, a champion and whatnot is that kind of the same for Kled? <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> i do not pay attention okay. to stuff like that at i understand all. yeah so i know that you lose so i know like being unmounted you do lose because not only does unmounted Kled have the lowest base health in the game but he also has the lowest base movement in the game at 285 no shit um now he does get increased movement speed if he's moving towards enemies because like the the whole thing is made to be like all right you move hella slow you're not running away so you better Mm. fucking go in (laughs) that's kind of fun actually that they incorporated that aspect of of his lore almost yeah yeah Okay, interesting. Um, Kled is also the first champion and one of only two champions in the game whose health cannot be improved except through growth per level. The second being Pike. I always fucking forget that, by the way. <laughs> when I'm playing support, I'm trying to fucking heal Kled. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that either. Man, I, I guess I... mean, I... He can he... I think he can be healed to a point, right? I thought? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just can't. So if he buys, like, um, if he buys health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I didn't, I did not uh, know that. I. <laughs> it's, that's, that's an interesting design decision. Um, makes me yeah. curious. It makes me kind of curious to, like, play him more and see how that feels almost. I don't know. Give it a whirl. Fuck it. Sure. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kled's Wild Ride. It's one of his abilities. Is likely a reference to the Disneyland attraction, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, from oh. the animated film, The Adventures of Ichabod you don't and think, Mr. Toad. You don't think it's Mr. Bones' Wild Ride? <laughs> you know, it could also be Mr. Bones' Wild Ride, to be fair, but I don't know. I think it's Mr. Toad's, mm. because Mr. Toad, he's also riding a horse in that. Oh. I, you all lost me. I, <laughs> I thought of Mr. Bones' Wild Ride first. Yeah, too. right? I, I mean, Bones, Wild Ride. I, I don't know about the the horse thing from the um, the Disneyland attraction. I've been on that thing multiple times. You've probably been more than I have, though. To be fair. <laughs> uh. mm. Hang on, I'm googling Mr. Oh, Bones deep, Wild Ride. Because none of you answered. I can explain it. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure whatever you find will probably explain. Oh, it's it, a game. No, uh, no. From, it was like a coaster. <laughs> it was right? it was a roller coaster tycoon map. Yeah, that's one yeah, of yeah. Okay, I see now. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm good now. You can move They're on. Both there's viable. A, there's a lot of homework for this episode. Yeah, I, I can explain <laughs> it. It was it was like some guy played roller coaster tycoon two, and he made like the slowest possible roller coaster and made it go <gasps> for like years. So like, the people would be riding the roller coaster for years in game time. And like it would uh it would come up in like their speech bubble if you like clicked on them it said I want off Mr. Bones Wild Ride. <laughs> I want to get um, it. <laughs> it and then fun. when it it ended it just looped back around to the start so like the only thing that they oh could do is ride. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And uh, you had mentioned this, but Kled is in fact the first champion to have a swear, albeit censored, in game. Mm-hmm. It is wild that they uh, have like that little sensor bleep come up in game. Right? It's a little like jarring almost. They can keep that T rating. Yeah, you gotta I do never, what you gotta I don't do. think I've ever heard it in game. I think it was when you spawn in the game, like when the game first starts. Yeah, That's what yeah. he says. <laughs> Holy <laughs> beep! Where am I? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll have to fight our way out. 
uh, Cled's dismounted dance is the moonwalk. Mm. Cool. And it's not just like the basic moonwalk either. It's like the whole moonwalk. Oh, shit. There's some style to it. Does that include like the, the lean or whatever thing? Like, is that... It doesn't have the lean, okay. unfortunately, but it's got some, some of the other fancy footwork. Dope. <laughs> Uh, a sign depicting what seems to be Mordekaiser's helmet with a red cross on top of it can be seen in the background of Skarl's base or uh, Kled's base splash um, which is likely a reference to the fact that Mordekaiser ruled over the entire immortal bastion uh, before it became the capital of Noxus hmm. and that's probably what Kled wants the least <laughs> it's like hey <laughs> stay out <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, windmill in the background of Sir Cled, likely a Don Quixote reference. Mm-hmm. And finally, just a little fun fact <laughs> before uh, before release, there was a bug where if Mord made a Cled ghost, it would never ever die. This was back. <laughs> this was back in the day where you know oh, oh. if Mord ulted you and like killed you, it would create a ghost of you that he could then control. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about that. You could also do it to Dragon, Dragon. at the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just wouldn't die. And then when the buff expired, Cled would dismount, turn invisible, and just poke enemies in secret for the rest of the game. <laughs> I Great. miss these wild fucking bugs that used to happen. Yeah, like what's... at least half of which for, were from Mordekaiser and his stupid interactions <laughs> with bullshit. God, I know, right? <laughs> Damn Riot cleaning up their fucking code. Put some spaghetti back in there, man. I'm I want to hear the Amumu laugh from the whole map. <laughs> <laughs> was it Amumu's laugh? I thought it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those all are all right. my fun facts. How do we feel about Cled? How are we all feeling? I dig him. Yeah, I dig him. I feel like if you're gonna, if you like the idea of Cled, you should play him in game or at least like listen to his quotes. <laughs> I feel like it will give you everything you need to know about Cled is in his quotes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it makes me think a bit of like Kindred, honestly, um, in that they both have a really expansive VO and it's a really fun character to just. Uh, at least listen to, like you were saying. Uh, <laughs> you know, playing it seems like is kind of like a weird, like a, a bit of a unique experience for sure. You know, um, and that's kind of what scares me off of Colette a little is a feeling of like, I don't know what the fuck I'm I'm doing, and I feel like I need to manage, <laughs> like being mounted or unmounted, um, and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm sure it comes to you, right, Sean? Like driving stick or something? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah, there are a bunch of little <laughs> tricks with Cled that, like, you kind of learn as you pick them up. Like I was saying, the wait to level up your W and stuff. You can watch, like, mm-hmm. streamers. There are a couple Cled 1 tricks that you watch a couple oh. streams and you kind of just learn all the little tricks. And then yeah. you're pretty good Cled. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take much, I don't think. He's a pretty simple champion when it comes down to it. It's just the remounting mechanic is pretty jank. So, like, once mm-hmm. you learn your way around that, it's not too bad. Let me say jank. So, that be your tip? Oh, go ahead. Oh, when you say jank, like, does that mean it doesn't, like, work consistently? Is it just, like, you gotta, it's got a lot of weird, just weirdness to it? Yeah, there's just, like, a lot of weirdness to it, like, so, like, you, like, when I'm playing Cled, I'm thinking, like, is this guy, is, like, the person I'm facing skills about to dismount me, and should I save, like, my skills or try to save my W so I can try to remount (laughs) faster, or should I try to (laughs) use, like, my W right away so it goes back down and I can get it back off cooldown faster? Like, there's, like, weird stuff like that, and you're kind of always trying to think about how you're going to remount, which is, like, the weird power about Cled. He, uh, he actually builds Gargoyle's stone plate a lot, which is kind of a weird item that doesn't mm-hmm. get built a ton. But, like, you you just use it when you're trying to remount. You get the giant-ass shield, and it gives you enough time yeah. to remount then. So, like, <laughs> no, yeah, that makes it's sense. really good for Cled. But, Interesting. Yeah. Especially because I imagine the movement speed a thing of gargoyle really doesn't impact him if he's already slow as hell anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean he's not he's not too hard though. I think the big problem with Cled is that he has basically no AoE at all in his kit. So like mm-hmm. once you get to like late game and you're trying to team fight, you're basically just trying to jump on the carries and if you can't do that, you're basically useless. So like that I feel like that's why he falls off a ton. If you can get ahead on Cled, I mean, you're just going to one-shot the carries late game anyways. <laughs> so he's pretty good then. But, like, if you, like, don't get ahead in laning phase, you're pretty useless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's tough. It's hard to play a champion that, like, 
that needs to get a lead or you have to like very heavily rely on your team yeah. <laughs> yeah. team fights afterwards which you can't always do when you're diving in like that you know yeah right i mean that ult that, that's that's a i mean you're only going one direction we going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at least it kind of brings them along with you it's not like when i leona like leona ian it's like fuck i really hope they follow me <laughs> <laughs> Here's a move speed buff. Come on. I love the the cloud ult's so good. I love the the sound it makes and everything. I yeah. get so excited. Right. Even if I'm like on the other side of the map, I just get a little bit like, oh <laughs> yeah, he's all <laughs> It's just so fitting. All right. Sweet. Well, that'll do it for Cled. Um, yeah. Before we kind of do our sign off, is there any uh, is there anyone you want to shout out or any kind of. Uh, and socials or plugs yeah, or social plugs you want <laughs> to make i just shout out the trinity force stuff i guess we have a website i'm not sure if, offhand, but you, if you google it i'm sure you can find it and join our <laughs> discord that's where we do most things we do a community game night tuesday nights where anybody's free to join in and we try to do custom games or arams or just normals if we don't have enough people but that's every tuesday at, it's usually at six no, it'd be seven fifteen Eastern, and, and then uh, yeah, listen to the to our podcast. It's just the Trinity Force podcast. It's on every streaming service, so it's pretty easy to find. We're technically the longest running league podcast ever, so <laughs> we're on like episode like seven hundred and fifty something now. Probably it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big deal. <laughs> there, yeah. there are people who genuinely know how to play the game, so they yes. can like update like patch notes and going over all the details mm -hmm. on that, which is helpful. <laughs> yeah, so we just talk about league as like a game as like the competitive side of it, I'd say we focus a yeah. lot more on, which if you find that interesting, give us a listen. A uh, shout out to mm -hmm. the boys, Eric. It was on this podcast, and uh, Kai and Bomo and Chaz are the other hosts. So, shout out to them, and uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, well, of course. Thanks for joining, joining it's a lot us. Of fun. Yeah. All right. So you can find us on Twitter at Loreheads, and we have a YouTube channel. John posts some parodies there. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a Discord. It's linked in the description of this episode. And we have a Patreon now. Thank you to all of our patrons. Yeah. And a special thank you to our Madarda tier patrons, King of Hearts, Jeremy Rich, and Mylect. You guys are awesome. And I'm so sorry for friend zoning you in that last in that last <laughs> episode. I didn't mean it. I we are in love with he's you. A, I'm sorry. He's a I didn't mean it. <laughs> he'll, he'll, uh, uh, no. <laughs> he'll whisper sweet nothings in your ear one night and then just stomp on your heart the next. <laughs> but thank that you for, is John. For the That's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also do have a Twitch uh, oh, yeah, channel that God. we stream at um, on Saturdays. It's just twitch.tv slash loreheads. Um, Saturdays we do a league stream, and then Mondays I'm doing TFT streams. Yeah, so, John does uh, Monday evening EST. Um, we're going to try to do a little bit earlier in the day Saturday maybe to be friendlier to the EU crowd. <laughs> but it's tough if we have plans on Saturday. We have kind of have to wait till the evening. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, and join us next week because we're going to talk about the mouth of the abyss. Cogma. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Old lore time. Yeah. Oh, no lore time. <laughs>